don't do this yourself. Don't do this at home. It's aviation grade aluminum. Then on the, at the bottom, we've got the microcontroller, basically the brains of this whole thing. Now let's go a little deeper. This is the, the mining board, the fan. By the way, I forgot to mention earlier, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, do, leave the, do leave them uh, in the comments down below. Hi, I'm Alex, founder of Heatbit. We make home devices that make you money. So today, I'm gonna show you what it is, how it works, and take it apart. It's gonna be a pretty long video, and um, I'm gonna be looking at my notes sometimes to make sure that I don't miss anything. Well, word of caution, uh, do not take it apart at home. It's a high powered and pretty complicated device. Uh, one, you will lose your warranty. Uh, and two, um, it may actually be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So let's start. Um, this is a, a Heatbit Mini. Um, it's a heater and an air purifier. Um, it's, it's working right now in the echo mode. So it's uh, mining Bitcoin um, at uh, about 10 terahashes. Uh, it's very, very quiet. It's like a quiet AC mode. The air comes from here, comes out here, much cleaner and warmer if you use it in the, in the heat mode. And uh, here you've got the panel with the touchpad, also with the indication of, uh, of the device performance. So you turn it on by pressing the power button. Normally you need to give a few seconds to, to load. Yeah, now the system is loaded. And right now it's working in the only with computing, so only with Bitcoin mining. And at current rates, it um, gives you about uh, 50 to 70 percent in some states to 80 percent cash back on the um, on the uh, heating bill. So to change the mode, you can just press the mode button. Uh, so this would be the um, the boost mode where you get a lot more heat. But uh, this is where the normal coil uh, goes in. You know, on the, on the cold day, you want to use it. Uh, or this is actually a thermostat where you can adjust the, the desired temperature and then the system will automatically work towards that temperature. If you do a long press, it will change the mode into the air purifier mode. So right now I switched it to the air purifier mode. Um, this would be the night mode where it's very, very quiet. Um, you can see that right now we've got what 27 of uh, PM 2.5. That's actually very good uh, air quality. So you don't need too much of them air purification right now. I guess this thing has been working here for some time. So let's take this thing apart. So first thing I'm doing is um, turning this thing off and just for extra safety, removing the power plug. Um, let me repeat, don't do this yourself. Don't do this at home. It may be unsafe for you because you probably don't know what you're doing. Um, and if you do, you will definitely lose your warranty. I'm taking off the the top grill. Yeah, that was easy. And uh, removing the connector. Yeah, so this is the top grill. Uh, it's made from uh, heat resistant plastic uh, to make sure that it doesn't basically melt uh, when the hot air comes out. Uh, you've got uh, the, the uh, touch screen that I, I already covered. And uh, the, the shape of the top grill is, is kind of special. It was designed by one of our uh, uh, engineering team members uh, who actually used to design uh, power turbines. So the guy kind of knows quite a bit about the, the airflows and, and what to do with it. Um, first of all, the, the airflow direction and also the noise direction is away from the user. So that way the, um, the heat spreads much better. Um, and at the same time, uh, it's less noisy uh, for the user when, when you use the device. And also there's, there's kind of like an, an extra cavity here. So if something drops, let's say some, some water drops, accidentally drops onto the heater, there's a high chance that it will just stay here and wouldn't go down into the electronics um, down below, um, which kind of saves your device in this case. This is the circuit board that's inside the touchpad. So, these are the buttons. Um, the way they work is uh, by changing the uh, electric potential um, of, of the sensor. 
Um, it's kind of how it would work in, in uh, the buttons in your Tesla, for example. Um, then you've got multiple LEDs in here. And also on this side, we've got the light sensor. So we need the light sensor here so that uh, when the ambient line changes, let's say it gets dark in your room, um, the um, intensity of the light uh, of, the, of the top grill is gonna go down as well. So automatically adjust, just like it does on your iPhone, by, by the way. Um, then on the, at the bottom, we've got the microcontroller, basically the brains of this whole thing. This is the buzzer, so it makes the, the noises. If you heard me, when, when I press the buttons, uh, you might have heard the, the noise, so it actually come down, comes from here. This is the sensor for uh, the temperature. So it's needed for, to, to figure out the uh, temperature of the air that, that comes out. So we use that data to further automate and improve the, the performance of the device. So for example, you wouldn't get the air that's too hot when it comes out. Let's look at the case. It's aviation grade aluminum. That is basically an aluminum pipe, which has been sandblasted and then anodized to improve the uh, wear and tear uh, on the on the device yeah but it does it does have a very nice touch and feel to it next we want to look at the what do we have here the the heating coil so I will need this to remove the heating coil So let me, okay. So this is the, the heating coil. It's, it's a usual heating coil. And it's here in case you need a boost in heat in addition to the, the heat that comes from the miner. Um, this heating coil has some uh, pretty good safety features. It turns off when it reaches 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is one of the safety features to make sure that things and plastic don't start melting and it shouldn't really reach 125 degrees Celsius so if it does and something is wrong so it's good that it turns off. Uh, next thing that we've got is fan and heating uh, controls board so that's the the board that we've got here let me turn this around a little so this is the the, the circuit board that controls the pull things out the board that controls the fan and also the heating coil. Okay. Here we go. By the way, I forgot to mention earlier, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, do leave the do leave them uh, in the comments down below. Would love to hear from you, and we'll make sure that our engineers keep keep monitoring what what people say. Now, coming to to the circuit board, this this circuit board uh, controls the uh, heating coil and the fan. We're going to talk about the fan a little later. It basically has a triac that does the um, the the controls and also the relay. So the relay is there. Um, to turn off the power uh, if uh, any of the um, devices start drawing too much power. So that's the uh, safety function. And additional safety function here is um, if the, the fan is uh, not working, the uh, heating coil will not start. That's uh, an additional safety measure that, that we implemented. One cool thing that we've done here, and actually the, the initial reason why we wanted to have this board is when you have uh, a thermostat uh, you need to uh, switch the heating coil on and off sometimes because it's automatic controls of the of the heat. And then if you use the uh, relay, it's going to have this clicking sound. You might have heard the, some of the electronics devices, especially heaters, have this heating sound, which kind of can get annoying. So um, what we've done, instead of using the, the relay for that, we use the, the triac, uh, which does it uh, much more smoothly and there's absolutely no heating sound. Um, we thought it was important to, to not have that noise. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we removed that clicking sound completely. Um, next thing we want to look at is the, the miner and, and the radiator. Let me... Uh, okay, so it moves here now. Let me pull out the 
the wires okay okay here we go so this is the the mining board and this is the the radiator uh down below it's got the the mining chips and the control chips um and the radiator obviously uh removes the the heat from the uh from the mining chips the chips themselves uh the chips themselves are uh, latest gen five nanometer chips there's basically uh, two fabs in the world that produce this kind of stuff. It's, uh, there's one in uh, South Korea and one in Taiwan. Uh, so we obviously you using one of them to, to produce the chips. What else is interesting here? Uh, yeah, obviously using the heat pipes to transfer the, the heat from the chips to, to the radiator. And yeah, I think that's, that's about it for, for this part. Uh, next, we're going to look at the, the fan, so uh, we need to take this thing uh, off. Here we go. So um, this is the the fan. The uh, the fins here uh, designed specifically to make sure it gives us enough pressure at very low RPM. So basically at very low noise. I mean, when I'm spinning it just like this, you you're not gonna be able to hear it. But I I can actually feel the um, feel the airflow already. Yeah, this whole thing, by the way, the, the way that the device is built is according to um, our uh, apparatus uh, patent. Uh, so, yeah, it's actually quite unique how this whole thing is built. Now that we're done with the fan, next thing we're going to look at is the, the filters. So the filters are located here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to uh, take one out. Yeah. So this is the filter. This is another one. So they kind of... There's two filters in, in each device, uh, like, like this here. Um, this is a, a HEPA filter. Um, it collects 99.97, yes, 99.97% uh, of uh, particles uh, over uh, three uh, microns. So that's pretty good. It basically collects a lot of um, pet hair, dust, fumes, um, like, any any good uh, air purifier would so these are the filters and they they're obviously changeable you can you can easily take them out clean them put them back in or get a new one we're actually going to have subscriptions on this if you, if you want to join that way now let's go a little deeper so i'm going to pull this out um, what we've got here here we've got uh two sensors uh this one is for uh pm pm1 pm 2.5 pm 10 um, this detects the small particles in the air uh, and this sensor uh, does a few things so it's a temperature humidity and detects the fumes uh, in the air as well if we look a little deeper in here it may be hard to see but there's the power supply we actually use 24 volts power supply it's basically better uh, with 24 volts instead of 12 because uh, you you have smaller currents running through these wires it's a little safer this way and also there is the I'll turn it a bit for you. Here is the, the Orange Pi. So Orange Pi uh, runs the uh, uh, Linux. Uh, we took a Debian and actually rebuilt uh, the core specifically for, for Heatbit uh, to optimize for, for the kind of tasks that, that it runs. Um, and uh, Linux provides uh, the Bluetooth connectivity, the Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, runs any kind of general code that we need to run um, on the device. Um, yeah, Wi-Fi uh, is both 2.4 and 5G. Uh, that's that's kind of natural. That's what's inside the, the Heatbit Mini. 
Um, again, if you have any questions, or if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. It's going to be super helpful for us. This particular device, we took it apart and reassembled quite a few times. So some of the things are not quite ideal, like some, some of the wiring. Of course, in the, in the production devices, all the, all the wiring is, is going to be done uh, properly. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, let's, let's keep in touch. Cheers.